Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. Today, we are going to be doing some thrift flips. I just love to take just some common items that you can find around your home or the thrift store and just update them to such cute little decor for our homes. So we're gonna be doing some picture frames. I've got an old door and we'll also do, I'm not sure if this is an umbrella stand or a waste basket, but whatever it is, it is getting made over today. Well, there is lots of fun in store for us, so let's get these projects started. I absolutely love these frames and also the pictures in them. This one is like a little mountain scape with a waterfall. And then this one you can see the little windmill in the back, kind of a little farm scene. And I just love these. I picked these up at an auction probably 25, 30 years ago. So we're just going to be doing something very temporary to update the middle. So I've taken just normal cardstock and I have cut it down to size to fit inside each of my frames here. I'm going to be taking these outside and spraying the paper with this Krylon spray adhesive. Then I'm going to take cotton muslin fabric and then laying the fabric over top of the glue on the cardstock and then we'll come back and get the sides glued down as well. And now I'm going to take my brayer and just run over the top of this just to make sure that everything is going to adhere well on each of these pieces here. And because I didn't really get these pieces of cardstock in the middle of my fabric, I'm just going to trim off some of this excess where it's a little too long in areas. Now I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to add just a little tiny dot of glue at each corner here. And then I'll be folding over each of the sides and gluing those down as well. So then that gives us a nice little canvas to be able to create on. And I'm going to do the same thing to my other little piece as well. And once I had everything glued down, I did go back over the top with my brayer just to make sure that I did not have any large drops of the hot glue that would be interfering with our next step, which is going to be using the new Iron Orchid Designs stamp. This is called Reverie. Just gorgeous. It has the little angels and then all of these little filigree and florals. It also has this beautiful urn detail on this page. And this one has another one of the angels. They are actually uh, left looking and right looking on your little angels there. And then more of your little filigree details, some more little floral borders, and this gorgeous little cherub with the shell detail on that. So I just think these are fabulous. Now, because I have not used these yet, I am going to have to condition them. And you only do that one time before you use them. Your stamps are on a plastic backer, but then you have the top that is a protective sheet, and you're going to remove that protective sheet. You're going to take some fine grit sandpaper and you're going to lightly rub across all of your stamp surfaces first one way and then the other. And what that is going to do is allow your ink to adhere to your stamp a little better. So now I'm going to take just a second and I'm going to do the same thing to this little set of stamps here as well and then we will begin stamping our surfaces. So for my first canvas I am selecting to use this beautiful detailed angel here and when you first remove your stamps from the backer, it can be a little difficult. So don't be afraid that you're going to hurt your stamp. Sometimes it just may take a little more effort that first time. And I'm just going to center that and just see 
how I'm going to like that on there. And now I'm going to be using one of those clear cover sheets as a stamp mount. So then when I turn it over, this surface is going to be ready for ink. And I am using the Ranger Archival Ink in the color Cobalt. And I love the look of blue and gold together. So now I am going to load my stamp with the ink. And when I am stamping fabric, I do put a little more ink on there than if I were stamping on paper. And now I'm going to take a wipe and just clean off a little bit of that ink from around the design. Hover and center it up and then press it down. Use the warmth of my hand to make sure that that ink is going to soak all the way into that fabric. Now with one hand securely holding the stamp, I'm just going to gently begin to rub my fingers over the remaining side, making sure that I cover each area of the design so it gets a nice crisp image on our canvas. And now holding this side, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. It doesn't take nearly as long to stamp your paper but I want to make sure that all of that ink transfers from my stamp to the fabric. And now I'm going to lift up. And that is just glorious. Mr. Shabby was actually the one who suggested the blue ink. I was going to do either black or brown, and he thought the blue ink would be beautiful. So I'm going to set this aside to let this dry. And I always wipe off my stamps. And then I go back and wash them a little later. And for my next canvas, I want to use this gorgeous little cherub. And I'm not going to be able to get the entire design on this one, but I want to get as much as I can centered. Take the other plastic protector sheet and lay that down. Thoroughly ink up my stamp. I've got a little bit in the middle here, so I'm going to clean that up and then wipe the excess from around the edges. And again, I'm just going to kind of let the warmth of my hands, let that ink soak into the fabric. Then I'm just going to start gently pressing with my free hand while my other hand firmly holds on to the stamp. And then gently apply pressure with my free hand to the other side. And then we'll lift up. And the detailing in the stamps is just absolutely amazing. And now I am using the font set called Letterpress from Iron Orchid Designs. I'm going to be using this D and put my monogram in the middle here. And I'm going to place the D and pick it up with my cover sheet. I'm going to add a little bit of ink to that. Wipe up the excess, hover over and line it up, and then apply a monogram. And there you go. I love it. Oh my goodness. These are so pretty. And now all I'm going to do is just drop these into these frames here. What a quick and easy way to update these. How gorgeous. And then when I don't want that in there anymore, I can just take a safety pin and just grab onto that fabric there and pull that right out just to be able to decorate with them as I originally had them. I think these are just stunning. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. Next up is our cabinet door. I did go over it with some fine grit sandpaper just to kind of get the shine off of it and then made sure that I thoroughly cleaned off any of that remaining dust. Next, I've placed it on top of a Lazy Susan that really gives good access to your edges. I am going to be using the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, and I'm going to apply a couple of coats to this just to make sure we've got nice, even coverage. 
and I do like to start on the sides and then come over and smooth everything out. So after my paint dried, I took it outside and used some fine grit sandpaper to distress and bring back some of that original color of the door. And now for this center panel, we're going to do another stamp. We are going to be using the new Iron Orchid Designs stamp called Rural Scenes. And this is also a two-page stamp set with all of these wonderful elements that you can pick and choose from to create the look that you want for your own customized toile pattern. And I have some toile fabric here, so I'm going to kind of use this as my inspiration for the layout of my design. And again, because these are new stamps and I haven't used them yet, I'm going to do the one-time conditioning to make sure that my ink will adhere well to the stamp so we can get a good inked impression. So I have taken several different selected elements and I'd lay them face down. Take one of those cover sheets and then just make sure that each one of those elements is stuck down to my cover sheet. So there we have all of the elements that I want to use. And then I'm going to be covering this area all in here with some blue painter's tape. We're going to once again be taking our Ranger Archival Ink in the color Cobalt, and we're gonna thoroughly ink up our stamp. And I'm going to wipe off some of this excess here and hover over and then I'm going to place it down and just begin holding one side and then gently rubbing my hand over the other design elements making sure that my ink is not going to smear. Hold it down again with one hand and then just gently walk my fingers over the other parts of the design. And there are a lot of details on this, so just take your time and just gently rub your fingers all over everything so you get a nice impression of all of the design elements that you've chosen to add to your board here. And lift straight up so I don't smear any of the ink. And there we go, that is just stunning. I love it. So I'm going to set this aside to dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and finish the process. So my ink is dry and we're going to remove the tape. Look at the detail in all of those beautiful little elements there. Just absolutely stunning. I just love that. Now we are going to bring back in our first stamp that was called Reverie and I want to use these little elements right here and I want to put them on the corners just to kind of dress that up a little bit. And there we go. I just love that. So I'm going to follow that same process and stamp the remaining corners. So I have all four of my corners stamped here. And I am planning on adding hooks down here, but I have hidden them from myself at the moment. But I will have those on there when I do the final reveal for you. So now let's go ahead and move on to our next project. And for our last project, I'm going to be painting our woven container, again using the Waverly in the color Plaster. Many times this reddish undertone can bleed through the paint, so I sprayed it with three coats of a clear polycrylic sealer just to be able to prevent all of these red tones from coming through our paint. And because this does have a woven texture to it, I'm going to start by kind of dabbing the paint on and swirling. And then I can come back and smooth over the top, making sure that I don't have any paint drips. 
So I'm going to finish painting this, and while it's drying, we'll move on to the next step in the process of this project. I'm going to be making a medallion out of clay, and we're also going to be bringing back in our Reverie stamp, and I'm going to use this urn to create my clay medallion. And I just think that's going to look really pretty on the front of our little container here. And this is the clay that I like to use. I get this off of Amazon. And all of my Iron Orchid Designs products I get from Kimberly at My Victorian Heart. And I'll have all of this stuff linked down in the description box for you. So I'm going to grab some of the clay, start to make it nice and soft and malleable, press it between my palms to flatten it out. And then I have a rolling pin, but because I know once I start rolling this out, it's going to shake my camera, I'm just going to roll this across my clay and thin it out until I can use my stamp to make an impression. I'm going to take my stamp, place it on the clay, and then just begin to gently press that stamp into the clay. And now I'm going to take a large safety pin with this still in the clay and just cut the clay from around the outside of the stamp here. And then gently remove all of the excess from around the design. Carefully lift our stamp from the clay. And that is just so beautiful. So now we are going to clean up the edges of our clay. And using a small brush and a little bit of water, we're just going to go around these edges and smooth everything out. I'm going to carefully pick up my clay and I'm going to place it on a drying rack. This allows the air to get around it and helps it to dry and it eliminates a little bit of the cracking as well. So I'm gonna let my clay set up for about 30 minutes. So I actually had to let this dry a little over an hour. You can see that it is dry on the outside edges, but it is still wet in the middle. That way when I go to glue it down, I can apply pressure to these outside edges and I'm not going to distort any of that clay. Apply my tight bond wood glue. I'm going to bring this in, center that up, and then I can begin to press down all of these edges, making sure that my glue is going to adhere very well to our little basket below. And I've got that pressed down and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to let this dry for a couple of hours, then we're going to come back and get some color on this. So now that this has dried, there is some of the detail that is present in the center of the stamp here that I noticed that I did not get into this area right here. So that may be something I have to address later. I'm really not sure. So we are just going to go ahead and do just a thin coat of paint again in the color plaster on top of our little mold here. And then we'll just see if I need to do something else in this area right here. Now I'm coming back with my Annie Sloan Clear Wax, but any brand of clear wax that you have will be just fine. And I'm going to dip my brush in and just kind of work that into the bristles. To save time in the video, I'm only going to be working on the medallion, but the entire piece will be sealed with the wax. So I'm going to just, in a swirling motion, cover my medallion in that clear wax. And then I'm coming back with a rag, and I am wiping off the excess and buffing that in. I would like to have a wax kind of close to my ink color to match the other projects that I've done. And the closest that I could find is this color called Nantucket Blue. So I'm going to take just a small amount of my clear wax, place it in the middle here. This is just the lid off of a coffee can. And I'm going to take just a tiny dot 
of that paint and I'm going to mix that up to create my own custom color. And that's why we put the clear wax on first because it's going to act as a barrier between the clay and this colored wax that I will be adding. And again, I'm dipping my brush into the wax and I'm going to dab off a lot of that excess while I'm working it into the bristles. And then we're just going to start working that into the details of our medallion here. So I'm going to go off camera for a few minutes and just continue adding my colored wax to my clay piece here. And now I'm coming back with a wet wipe and I'm just going to gently start wiping away that excess wax just to be able to leave that blue in all of the details. And you can see just how gorgeous that is. Oh my goodness. I really like that. And then I can wipe the excess blue from around the outside edges here. And you just keep wiping it back until you get the look that you want. And although I didn't get all of the details in the middle here like I would have wanted, I still think that is just so, so pretty. Well, now all I need to do is get everything styled up so you can see how beautiful all of this week's projects turned out. you so much for joining me today. It has been my pleasure to craft with you. Please subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next time my sweet friends, be blessed.